Hey everyone, welcome to the Beyond Extent podcast, a podcast dedicated to a chat between two environment artists discussing everything about the industry we work in. I'm Timothy and I'm joined by William, who is a friend and fellow colleague of mine. In this episode, we will be going over the topic of finding your own artistic style, subject matter that interests you and how to stay true to your artistic self. This is an important topic for all our artists out there, so let's dive straight in. Hi William, welcome back to the podcast, dude. Hello Timothy, um, also welcome back, dude. <laughs> I don't want to have an awkward intro like we had the last time. <laughs> uh-huh. I was listening back this to it. This was awkward, this was, this was perfect, this yeah. was perfect. Hello <laughs> was and welcome back everyone else as well, dude. Oh yeah, that's a good point, we never actually do that, so welcome to the podcast everyone. Yeah, last last episode was uh, was funny listening back to it, especially in the beginning. When uh, when it's just like, oh, <laughs> the awkward interactions that we had. But it's all good. It's all good. How are you, you doing, know, man? That's, um, I'm okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think I always say that. I'm good. Um, just a little tired, like always. Um, like always. But again, ready for the weekend. You know, oh, yeah, just uh, all that stuff. All the good stuff. And you? Yeah, I'm doing good, too. I'm like, uh... I'm ready for the weekend too. Like it feels it feels ridiculous to say this like every time, but I'm I'm always looking so forward to the weekend. Like it's always it's always like <sighs> Well from from my side it's not really that it's downtime because I do a lot of stuff in the weekend. But yeah. it's yeah, maybe it's something to do with just having having <laughs> commitments to a nine to five schedule. I don't know. <laughs> that that's the thing, right? I, I think about that a lot as well because I love I love my job, but I'm, I still look forward to the weekend. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, yeah. I think it's just because it's, it's your time, you know, on your own terms. Like, of course you have to do stuff, but you have to do it because you want to usually, mm-hmm. you know, it's like you're, you're, it's more, you just have like this independence and freedom that you at work, of course, you know, you, you can be independent as well and, and, and work on your stuff, but it's, you can't say, oh, I'm going to do that later, yeah. you know? And I think that's just, so, you know, I, I don't know. It's just a different thing. And of course you also want to be, you know, more, you want to be all there and, and, and everything for, for work because, you know, you're getting paid for it. You want to do your best. Mm-hmm. So I think it's just, you go into it with a different mindset. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, it's the same for me. Like, uh, maybe, maybe it's because the deadlines are stricter or I don't know. Yeah, this makes me think now. Like, it's it's probably something to do with um, the the confinements of the job itself, where you can't really do like, especially especially me looking at my personal work. I have the choice between um, I don't know management, emails, uh, personal work, the blog, the podcast, um, doing some other stuff, some exciting stuff that's coming up for the Patreon. Um, like there's there's so much choice, whereas in in the job itself, it's more limited to like a couple of options. Yeah, you can't you can't just switch from one thing to the other willy nilly. Mm-hmm. Even though even though our job is really good at that though, where they're yeah, they're really yeah. really open about um, how we control our own schedule and like when you take your breaks and because comparing it to my girlfriend's job, she has like half an hour break at lunch and then mm. she can pick like two tea breaks for like 15 minutes and that's it but oh, she okay. she has to schedule it like during the day she has to say like to all her colleagues like okay i'm taking my 15 minute break now and she's always oh. alone on break which is like yeah the that's... polar opposite of our office basically yeah that's strange well what what i what was like a big thing for me when i just started working was uh I had never had a full-time job before, right? Mm-hmm. So that was, on the one hand, of course, it was amazing having this job, getting getting paid is great, um, and just, like, working on something cool. But then sometimes you still have those days where you wake up and you're like, this is, like, the rest of my life, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's like, there's, like, I, I, I talk to my, to my friends that are in, in university and they're like, 
you know of course they're they're under a lot of stress as well which is which is uh natural when you have like your your exams and stuff like that mm -hmm. but they also have like a two months semester break right yeah and i'm just like i'm never gonna have that again you know unless <laughs> i take like a sabbatical i'm like yeah i'll never just have like eight weeks off and, and again yeah. it's it's crazy looking in hindsight back to it right because um talking about myself like i i always complain about going to school and like oh i have to sit here for like eight hours and do this and do that and then go home do homework mm. and it's like you said like <clears throat> you have these you have these breaks in your in your schedule or like these longer vacations yeah where it's like there wasn't really that much stress even though we we thought of that it was a lot of stress being a student but looking back at it there wasn't really like yeah it's it's um it's also a different kind of stress right because mm -hmm. it's it's um you have responsibility but it's all for yourself if you if you fuck up an exam that's on you yeah. you know it's, yeah. it's it's time that you have to do it but if you're if you're fucking up in a job you're you're potentially costing people a lot of money <laughs> or um yeah exactly. or you're fucking up a schedule or something and that's 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 a lot more pressure i feel like because you're not you're not just worrying about yourself you're worrying about a, a big company or something like that mm -hmm. and it's uh yeah, yeah you're, you feel like you have to i mean i think you always should give your best anyway but you know you have to f you feel like you have to push yourself just to make sure that that there's no no repercussions for anyone else mm -hmm. and that's something i don't think you really have when you're when you're at university yeah the the, the feeling that i have really strongly um coming from university is that the first year of university was really stressful there was a lot of stuff that i was that i was doing and i thought that i had reached my limit but mm. then the next year like i was doing all that stuff and more so i was like constantly pushing my own limitations basically yeah like uh and i'm, and I'm still doing that with like the the with all the stuff that we're doing now like we're, we're still i'm still pushing the boundaries of like my limitations basically and i feel like every year like i get a little bit more organized in things and like get get more stuff done basically yeah so it's always it's always nice looking back to when i thought i was really stressed as a student but then looking back at it now it was like oh man that was that was nothing <laughs> yeah got you man it's uh yeah it's yeah, it's it's a weird like, uh, what is it like a, a, a two bladed sword? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Like yeah, a, a dichotomy. Yeah, it's it's this thing where you you love what you do, but it's it's also just it it, it takes a toll on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. But that's not actually what we want to talk about today. No, because we've been thinking about this for for a bit and. It's something that I personally struggle with and I feel like I'm still struggling with it a bit and that's how to find your own artistic style. So it would be good for us to dive into that and how we sort of um, went through it and like waded through the waters of like finding your own artistic style. Because mm. it, yeah, go ahead. No, it's, 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 it's a super interesting question because uh, I think especially a lot of uh, newer artists they they try to imitate stuff right either real world or different art styles that already exist mm -hmm. and i think it's really uh it can be really difficult to like pave your own way to where you want to go with your with your artistic style right yeah i think i think it has to start there right like you're you're inspired by other people you're you're looking up to especially now you're looking at the at the wall that is uh, the artistic wall on facebook and you're just like mm. oh my god this is cool. I want to do this. But then there is, there is so much art. Like there's so many, many different kinds of styles, so many different kinds of pieces that, especially in the beginning, you're just like grabbing at straws and, and being like, oh, do I want to do characters? Do I want to do environments? Do I want to do this? And you're just like, mm. it's, it, it can get overwhelming, especially all the way in the beginning when you're just starting out to just, uh, yeah to start figuring out who you are as a as an artistic person basically yeah so how how did you get started with that 
like all all the way in the beginning like um was there was there a moment when you you started out as a student and then you started looking at other work and like how how did that start basically mm, so when i when i started i i wanted to do realistic things because i wanted to end up in in a, in like triple a mm -hmm. and that's mostly realistic usually um so i started out just like trying to do do realistic texturing of props and uh, and environments and just trying to you know get get like as good as possible at working with reference working like working on textures just making everything look like it's like it's a, it's a real thing mm -hmm. um but then i i got a little bit more interested in uh well not i wouldn't say like it's my main style but i like doing style stuff as well just because it helps me um be it's... faster in the overall production right oh so it's okay yeah so when i when i did my little uh, modular town that i did i i did that in, in a stylized um art style because it it meant that i i would be able to finish it a lot quicker because there's a lot a lot more things that you can kind of you know stylized sculpting i would say is can be done a lot quicker than realistic sculpting mm -hmm. and it also um means that a lot of the time you can kind of you don't need to have like perfect connections between things like you would have like perfect blending, you know, yeah. that you would need in a realistic thing. If you, if you're working on a stylized uh, artwork, yeah, of course, stylized... ideally you would have that, but you know, yeah, stylized can be more crude than realistic stuff can be because you're, yeah. you're working from your own interpretation of it instead of focusing on like real life references. Yeah. Which of course it can also mean like, it can also be a great excuse, right, for people to be like, "Oh, well, this is my art style," mm -hmm. like, which is, which is, it's not going to help you in any way to get better and stuff like that. But um, I think if you're if you're thinking about your priorities and what you want to do, like for me, it was I just want to finish an environment, right? Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to do all the crazy detail stuff. I just wanted to have an environment and finish it. Yeah. And, so, um, so was that more yeah. focused on getting stuff done than finding your own art style? Like, is there a split between the yeah. two? Yeah, maybe, maybe it was at that point. I think now, what, uh, which I'm working on now, right? The Tokyo scene that I showed you, mm -hmm. that's, that's a lot more about finding my own art style because I, I know I can take my time to do it. Mm -hmm. I, I will have all the detail in there uh, that I would have if it was a realistic scene, but I consciously decided to go for my own style because I think it fits the, the, the mood of the scene and mm -hmm. it just, it, it makes it vi like more interesting visually than just a realistic scene. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, I, I've worked on, on some stuff, uh, previously, um, at my, at my previous job where they had a strict, uh, guideline about, about like their style. And, um, it wasn't that I, that I tried to like go for their style. It was more that I, I took some of the things that they said in, in their art Bible and stuff. And I, I thought about that, like, uh, how to, how to work with proportions, how to work with, um, like, uh, uh, noise and textures mm -hmm. and how to, how to use this to get a specific effect. And then I, I, it, it all kind of then started when I, when I thought about all these things and then I tried, I just tried something out for texturing. And I use this this specific way in Substance Painter to get a mask that looks kind of like painterly. Mm -hmm. And um, after I had done that, I was like, "Oh man, this means not only can I do it really quickly, because like I could work on an environment really quickly because I can just when I'm done with the bake or with the with the preparation for texturing, I can just plop this into Substance, use this way to generate my masks, and then." have a really cool, interesting texture that has this cool painted look without actually having to paint anything. Mm -hmm. um, so but at, it also, at this yeah. point, were you already focusing on, on props or uh, uh, is, that, is that still an open question, basically? So uh, back, back in the day when I, when I did my first stylized environment, back then I was... I was just trying to do environment stuff, like which which props are a part of, but it was mainly mm -hmm. I wanted to do an environment because I had never done one, and I wanted to go into that direction. Yeah. Um, because because but, the reason yeah. why I ask is um, 
I, I see it like this. Like, I, I roughly went the same route as you, actually, where I was looking at um, art styles. Like, I, mm. I wanted to do realistic in the beginning because I didn't like, I didn't like the, 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 the look of mobile games back in the beginning or I didn't like stylized mm. that much. So I tended to gravitate more towards realistic. And then the next step for me was, um, it, was, it wasn't really the next step, but I sort of figured them out at the same time where it was like, okay, I can do purely props, I can do environments, or I can do characters for like um, the, the, big three, uh, uh, the big three categories, so to say, right? Yeah. So, and I, and I consciously made that decision of going for environments because... To be honest, I didn't really like characters that much. Like, I I went through, like, tons of live drawing classes, like, drawing models, and and there was never a moment when I was like, shit, I, wanna, I really want to do this. Like, that never happens. So I just took all the, all the things that I didn't like, and I sort of narrowed my scope towards the stuff that I did like, and that was environments. Hmm. So that's that's sort of how I went through that whole thought process. Obviously, um, I'm still figuring out like the the style of things because that is that is still like a separate question of it, right? Because now I'm just talking about like the the subject matter that that I like. Yeah. But now at least I have that sort of answered where I where I know that I want to do like full environments, uh, especially for my personal work. And now the next step is just looking for like the sort of art styles or like what interests me and how I can turn that into like the, the style that I want for myself. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, so do, would you say it was like a big conscious decision for you or was it just something that developed more naturally then? Um, what do you mean? The, the choice for environments? No, no, like your your style. Did you did you you know did you ever sit down then and were like, oh, so I like mm. this, I don't like this, I want to go into this direction. Um, it never really hit me until I did uh, an interview in in Brighton, like, mm -hmm. uh, and they told me that they really liked the concept art feel of my artwork, and that's that's where I sort of put all the pieces together. And I was like, oh, maybe it does have that style. But I was never consciously thinking about it before. Mm -hmm. But I always start with, um, like, the solid fundamentals that they teach in concept art as well. Like, I was, I was, in the beginning, I was trying to be a concept artist. So that's where my roots kind of come in. Yeah. Um, and then looking back at my, at my work, like, I use bold colors, like, in most of my pieces. Like, I really focus on, like, color contrast, like the um well mostly the use of color basically and i don't think even though i tried at certain moments i try to be really realistic with my stuff but i i always end up with something that is less realistic but tends to be more um yeah how would i say it like it, it tends to look more like concept art does where it's not like super realistic but it's it's like this weird in between, like it's almost the uncanny valley of like trying to get to realism. <laughs> hmm. So yeah, that's that's where that's where I really made the the conscious decision to really think about my stuff in that way. And yeah, it was purely because like someone else told me it was the art director of a studio that was like, "Oh, I like that you have like this concept art feel in all of your pieces." Hmm. Yeah, it's 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 weird. Sometimes it's it's harder for you to see, right? Because you're you have like a specific thing in mind that you want to achieve, but maybe you don't succeed a hundred percent, right? Mm -hmm. Like you want to make something hyper realistic, but you didn't, so it 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 goes into some direction of an art style, but you can't see it yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're so in the thick of it, like you're always yeah. on the front line. You never take well, I never take the time to to zoom out and look at my art and like really think about it in a way where I'm like, hmm, okay, for the next piece, I'll probably do this and that. It's always something that just comes along with like, oh, I want to do this. And then I start building and then I'm already in in the thick of it, working on it. 
and then sometimes I'll force myself to take a step back. But I never, I never do this on a scale where I start really thinking about, okay, this is my style. This is how I do stuff. So I can't do this. Like I never put those limitations on myself. And hmm. yeah, I think, I think an art style just comes from doing the stuff that you love. Like I was listening to an art cafe podcast with, uh, uh, Lois, which is like, uh, she's like, a uh, an artist from the Netherlands and she, she's really good at doing her own style. She does like, uh, character art, basically like 2d character mm. art, but it really, it really emanates this, her own style. And she was, she was talking about this in a way where she, she just did what she loved and she just decided to follow that instead of listening to other people and um trying to trying to accommodate for other people like it was just like no i want to do this so i'm just gonna follow this yeah i mean i, I think that's that's important as well right to 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 kind of do what you want to do it to a certain extent mm -hmm. yeah because for sure. you don't have that you don't have that a chance at work that much of course you know, there is some 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 opportunities that, that are given to you where you can decide stuff, but it's mm -hmm. never have like there's there's always someone else that has the last word, which is good because you know that way that's 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 a great way of like quality uh, quality assurance. But I think it's it's great to have the personal project as you're like as as like an outlet, right, where you can just do what you want to do. Yeah. You don't have to listen to anyone else say, oh, I, I would like this better if it was like this. Mm -hmm. You can, of course, and I think it's important that you still do. But sometimes it's also important to say, you know, I hear you, I hear your feedback, but I actually prefer this. I want to do it like this. And I think that's 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 really important to, to yeah, to be able to give yourself that, that freedom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you said, and especially for personal projects. Why, yeah. why would you bother... Um, like you, like you said, like, why would you bother extending the time that you're forced to do stuff? Well, quote unquote, like forced to do stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, whereas personal work is like, it should be like a celebration of your own personal style and like what you want to do. Like it should be yeah. super focused on that. Um, and I, and I actually fell into a trap with that on my last project, like last bastion where I came across this, I came across this point where I was like, okay, I'm building like a modular set. What if I try to take it the next step, not in terms of art style, but I also want to commercialize it when I was trying to sell it on the, on the Unreal Engine marketplace. Mm. And that's where <clears throat> I feel like, um, how should I say this? Like it kind of limited my artistic artistic perspective of it because i was always thinking about like the technical limitations of like okay how how right. are other people going to use this like i need to build it for other people not for myself and like i was <clears throat> i was always thinking about it in a way where i was um i was thinking about it if i'm if i'm just going to do personal work and i want to sell it like the people have to take it as is like I wasn't going to do any adjustments, but that doesn't really mm. work. Like if you want to commercialize your stuff, especially, <clears throat> sorry about that. Like, uh, especially if you're, if you're selling it on a marketplace, like the Unreal Engine marketplace, you have to adhere to their rules. Yeah. So that's where I felt like I was, uh, I was limiting my personal creative output for commercializing it a bit. Like I, I'm still glad that I did it. And I'm probably going to continue doing it, but I I have to be careful that it doesn't stifle my creativity going forward. Yeah, I I, I see what you mean because I mean it's also a great um, it's a great uh, challenge to yourself to say okay I want to make this in a way that I can sell it. You mm -hmm. know, you give yourself this limitation, but on the other hand, it does mean that you maybe can't do some stuff that you would have done otherwise. Um, and yeah, it's it. it, it it's like you're putting, you're putting uh, safety measures in your own playground. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like before, you had the complete freedom, but then there's like someone saying, "Oh, you can't, you can't go on this slide." 
you have to be this tall to go on this slide, <laughs> but it's yourself. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah, someone, yeah. someone's blocking you, but it's all by yourself. It's, it's all, it all comes from yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, yeah, you're that still can in be control. a good thing. Like if, yeah. if at a certain point you realize that you do want to go on that fucking slide, like you can yeah. make this decision to go on that slide, even if you put up a barrier before, but that yeah. doesn't happen with, uh, with external people coming in. Yeah. And yeah, I'm, I mean, I, I just want to stress this again, especially if you're starting out, it's of the utmost importance that you, that you listen to feedback, right? Mm -hmm. Because at the beginning, people will probably know more than you. And I mean, even not in the beginning, people will still know a lot more than you. <laughs> but I, I would say if you reach a point where you're like comfortable with working on something and knowing that it's 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 going to be good at least you know mm -hmm. i think then you can start about thinking um like thinking about yeah okay i want to do it this way i you have to be you have to have a certain confidence in yourself to say i know what i want and i know that i can achieve it yeah you know there's yeah but of course like i said uh, you should still listen to feedback uh or try to or at least you should consider their feedback you yeah. can listen to it, but if you decide, okay, this is not for me, then okay. But. I think I think that's that's a good point. Like, uh, you don't have to take every bit of feedback on all the time. Like, people no. people might be wrong, or people. It's like you said, like you you're the, making the decisions, especially for personal work. Like, if you get feedback from other people, and you think like, hmm, I I don't really see the point of that. Like, it might be yeah. good to just leave it on the side also those people don't know your project as well as you do right yeah. so sometimes they'll give you feedback which which would be correct for if you're working on something like this but then maybe for what you're working on it's actually not really that that uh that applicable mm -hmm. so it's just i mean i'm not trying to tell anyone to never listen to feedback i think i made that clear but um just if you're at a point where you feel comfortable in, in making something on your own, then try to not just take feedback, like take take every feedback with a grain of salt and think about if you want to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, but, I, I think yeah. the thing that I did um, early on, this, this might be really, how, how would you say it, like uh, selfish or like uh, superficial, but I would always look at their work and be like, oh, they make good artwork. So then they they already give get like more points in the point system yeah. if you want to see it because then of course. you know that they come from a place of experience where if um you're talking to i don't know just an example like a fellow student that isn't really interested in environment art and he gives you feedback on environment art maybe like you said you have to take that with a grain of salt and just be like okay i'll i'll have a look at it and then if it doesn't if it doesn't match your um if it doesn't match or what you're going for yeah exactly if it doesn't match what you want to go for then you can just you can just leave it on the side it's uh, um yeah go ahead yeah i do i do want to go back to um more specifically how to find your own artistic style oh yeah and right. just just, ma original. just make sure that we that we kind of answer that question uh even if it's a tough one it is a tough one. It's I, a good one, but it's a tough one. Yeah, because everyone goes through it on their own terms, right? But what really helped me was just experimenting a lot. Like, trying to do stuff. Like, trying to experiment with, with different things. Like, even even if you know that it doesn't work out for you. Like, I did, like, a ton of characters. Like, I even did, like, 3D characters. Fully rigged them and all that stuff. Hmm. But just after all that stuff, I just... There was, there was never this spark where I was like, oh, I want to do this in my personal work. Like, I always tended to gravitate towards one thing. And then at a certain mm -hmm. point, I was just realizing that and being more through to myself. Like, it might, be, it might be props for some other people. Like, if you tend to gravitate towards props and you have tried, like, a ton of different stuff, like, just be true to yourself. Like, do yeah. more props. Like, see if that still... If that still... Um, sparks your interest even after doing like the the fifth prop or whatever hmm. yeah what, what do you think <sighs> yeah it's 
I think it, in the end, you can think about it all you want, but it it has to it has to come from a from a natural place, right? From like an organic. It has, you know what I mean? You know what I'm trying to say? Mm, yeah, I I think like it's also interesting. Like you started out with um, you can think about it all you want. And I would finish that sentence with like you you have to do it. Yeah. Because, yeah, 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 exactly. Because if if you don't do it, then you're never going to experience what you what you like and what you don't like. So Yeah, like it, it's really important to experiment and like try new things and and see what sticks basically. Yeah. And see what what what's fun to you, see what's uh what's interesting to you. See what what you think looks good or feels good, and that's that's the thing. I, the, the, exactly, like you said, you can think about it all you want, and you can we can talk about it all we want, mm -hmm. but it'll never like what you have to do is you have to start working on something, and then maybe you'll decide. Oh, I'm working. I, I started this as a realistic scene, but actually, the more I think about it, it could be more interesting if I do it like this. If mm -hmm. I do the textures like this. If I if I change the proportions of the models like this. Yeah. If I, yeah, and 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 and, and that's that's I think where where you really will get somewhere uh, with finding finding an own art style. Mm -hmm. And and it's of and course it's also... it makes sense. Go ahead. Yeah. No, it, it makes sense. Of course, also to look at other people and look at their art style or look at games. Um, and but I wouldn't. I would try to not, except if that's what you what you want to like go for. Um, you can try to copy a specific art style, you know, or like do do like a scene. Oh, this looks like World of Warcraft. This looks like uh, I don't know, Dishonored. But um, it's. I think it's more interesting to take all of this in, like play these games. Uh, look at these people uh, the people that work on art station and take it all in and then kind of pick and choose what you find interesting or visually appealing and then kind of make your own of it right mm -hmm. be like i like that this game has a lot of bright colors and like high saturation i like that this game has uh over exaggerated silhouettes for everything i like yeah. that this game doesn't have any straight lines you know, and then you take this all, it all together, and then and, and maybe find something interesting. But then, yeah, you know, that, that, that's that's the way I think it makes sense to to kind of create your own style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's definitely it's a good not starting a point. Thing. Um, a thing, a thing that I always think back on is this quote by, I'm not sure who. I'll uh, <laughs> I'll need to link it in the in the show notes. But it's like you can be. A second grade Da Vinci or who whoever the artist is, but you can be a first grade you, because yeah. you're always going to be running behind. Like if you if you're really inspired by this one specific artist, and you always try to copy their style, you're always going to be running behind him. Like you're never yeah. going to find your own artistic voice. That's true. It's, yeah, it's it's, um, it's, it's, it's originality. Of course, is super hard as well. But mm. that's where, where in the end, I think we all want to be, right? We don't all want to be second grade anyone's. Yeah. We yeah, want to exactly. make our, our own stuff. Yeah, I think, um, I think like you said, like it's good to, to pick and choose like inspirations from, from other people. And also, um, don't, don't always focus on art station. Like go down some rabbit holes, like try to try to look at a style that you really like and like click on some, some obscure links that, that are further down on the, like the fifth page or whatever and see where that takes you go, go scour some, some more unique perspectives instead of always sticking to art station or like the, the stuff where you, where you, where all the artists focus basically, because then you're never going to get a unique uh, perspective. Uh, why are you trying to get people to click on dubious links? <laughs> okay, maybe <laughs> maybe not dubious links, <laughs> but like if you search for an environment art and you go to the fifth page, it's st it should still be safe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's it's if yeah, if you're if you're looking at what everyone else is looking at, then maybe uh, even if you do put your own spin on it, it might not be as. Uh, as unique as you might think. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, yeah. of course, not everything has to be perfectly unique. Um, but if, if, if that's what we're talking about, right? Like creating your own star, that's definitely a thing that 
don't like take references from a lot of different things but not only from mainstream things yeah should, should i put like the internet guidelines in the, in the show notes just to make sure that people don't <laughs> click dubious links <laughs> um there, there was a good point in in an article that recently got released on on the website too and i'm quite curious how people still um uh, were surprised by it because Hannah Hannah Watts was um, talking about looking for references on eBay, hmm. and it's something that I do all the time too. Like if I'm if I'm working on a prop, like eBay is the best source for yeah. stuff because people are trying to sell it. Like they 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 have like specific photos of like specific angles of the object that you're that you're trying to model. So it's probably one yeah. of the best sources. Like don't always rely on um google images like try to dig deeper and it's i think it's the same with like your personal art style like try to dig deeper when it comes to that stuff yeah just about that that reference thing i actually um i don't know if i've i, I mean i've used it a couple of times but um not not, not super extensively mm -hmm. but what's been super helpful for me when i was working on my old uh the winchester gun Mm -hmm. It was all these um, gun auction websites, right? Because yes. it's the same thing. They try yeah. to show off the gun. And in this case, it was actually not just not just people with their phones taking pictures of it. It, it was like the, act, the, the auction house, right? Mm -hmm. Doing like pretty high quality pictures of everything from all the different perspectives, showing like how the wear and tear looks so that, the, you know, which price they can get for it. Which, yeah, yeah. of course, is super interesting for me because I can look at the wear and tear super close. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so that's, that's uh, for me, it wasn't eBay specifically, but uh, just, yeah, like look where people want to sell stuff. And because that's when they're probably going to take the most pictures. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or, I, I used to, I used the same thing for um, my first high poly model that I did, and it was like a an old um, what was it like a, a Bizzarini? Like it's a it's a car brand that doesn't doesn't exist anymore. Hmm. But like looking looking towards like auctions and like really, yeah, like really because because it's such a unique car. Like they're only yeah. gonna sell it like once every like I don't know five years or whatever. Like it's it's a pure collector's mm. car, so you have to be really uh, you you have to do some digging to find some good references for that. And that's why that's what I was gonna say just now is um, what you can also do is what I did back in the day with the mixed results. Um, uh, ask people, like go on like a subreddit for old cars and ask if anyone knows like if anyone has one and could sh and could take some pictures for you <laughs> Ooh, oh man i used to do that when with guns i used to go on a <laughs> um on a, on, a, on a gun subreddit and be like hey does anyone have a walter ppk that they could take some 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 screenshots uh, some some pictures for me uh yeah, yeah. of them for me <laughs> man that's yeah, that's such a risky move when it comes to guns, no? I don't know. I mean... <laughs> I don't know. But, well, the thing is, so I would say that usually it wouldn't, it, it, it wouldn't be needed because there's so many pictures already out there in, in, on the internet. Oh, yeah, but um, if you really want to wanna model that really unique gun from World War I or whatever... Like exactly, and if it's like one specific part of that, that was the that was the thing. I just couldn't figure out how one part of the gun was like how how that uh, was connected or something. I don't know. I don't yeah. remember. Yeah. Um, but then you know that that could be that could be an interesting method as well. It it yeah, might be very. I've never tried it myself, but it's yeah. It's, it definitely it sounds interesting. Like it feels like you can get some good results from like really fanatical collectors out there that still have yeah. those things lying around. Yeah, it, it, that's the thing, right? If if you're looking for like an an old record player or something like that, that maybe there's not many pictures of, like a, or not a record player, like a gramophone, right? And then mm -hmm. you 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 go to like an, an antiques subreddit or something like that, and you're like, hey, does anyone have anything like this? Can you yeah. can you you know what I mean? It's a or go to shops yourself. That's actually a good one. I did that a couple of times where I went yeah. to like antique shops and like. <sighs> Well, they're not going to have that specific thing there, but it was just like getting some inspiration of what could be in in the same sort of timeline and what could fit in your scene. Like, 
there there is some weird shit out there in antique stores, man. <laughs> oh. But it's it's such a it's such a gold mine of really unique and obscure items. Yeah. That like if if you're if you're just talking to the store owner or whatever, like they'll most of the time they'll just be happy to to tell you some more stuff about it too. Mm. And it's a it's a really interesting way of getting like a unique perspective on things. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> that that went from finding your own art style yeah. to ending up in like an antique store, but <laughs> yeah, or in some obscure link. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's good though. Like. I feel I feel like sometimes in like uh, the two are in- interchangeable, right? Like you you shouldn't like like we said before, like you shouldn't only be inspired by the stuff that you see on art station. Yeah. Like uh, be inspired by traditional painters. Be inspired by I don't know some cool shapes of a building. Like it, it can literally be anything, and there's some yeah. crazy stuff in the world already. Yeah, I agree. It, it's it's yeah. Look for your own reference and look for your own inspiration and that's how you're gonna go get to your own art style at some point Mm -hmm. yeah yeah like it it takes time like it's not gonna happen in like a couple of months like i would even consider like in my case i still i'm still finding like and tweaking my own art style i kind of know like the big points but Mm. it's still gonna take a while before i properly settle into one yeah yeah it's it 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 takes a ton of time Mm mm-hmm how, um, because you're you're still working on it yourself, right? Like on your own own art style. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not done. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> so we've been like I've been in the industry for like uh, well, what is it, five six years now? I keep I keep forgetting how long it is because like I spend so much time working on my own art that yeah, it it, it sort of gives you like a time frame of what what you mm. can expect. Like be in it for the long haul yeah yeah all right cool what he said (laughs) so now we're at uh, roughly 41 minutes so it's time for one of the patreon questions nice um i feel we discussed this before but i feel like this is a good one from from lloyd where we talk about the our own favorite and most inspirational artists and Mm. also talk about why do you want to kick this off yeah, I mean, um, what probably the artist that I that I like I, I look at his art station the most is uh, Yannick Gombal. I don't know if I if I'm saying that right. Oh, um, is that the uh, environment artist for uh, Arcane? Yes. Yeah. And um, I mean, you know, this guy, this, this <laughs> fucking guy. He's so good. He's just so good. He he has this. It's it's like a. I mean that's all. Of course, it's also it has to do with the dishonored art style that we were just talking like just talking about art styles. Um, but it's just this. He the, the the sculpts and stuff that he makes. It's it's clean. It's it's like the perfect amalgamation of. It's clean and crisp, but it has that layer of detail and like. It's like I mean I think one of the most uh, like f- famous like the the, the 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 most known things that he's done is, is that statue. is that lion statue right <laughs> and it's it's, it's not so just good man yeah it's not just like a sculpted piece of wood it's like manufactured out of like these yeah. pieces that are and you can see the seams where the where the where the different pieces of wood connect and it's 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 it has this and it's it, it look it just looks menacing you know it, it looks amazing. And um, and that that kind of stuff is it's just so. Um, that's the kind of stuff that I want to have in my art, where it's like it 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 tells a story. It tells like, like you can see how it was constructed. It's it just makes sense. It feels authentic, mm-hmm. but it also just looks good, you know. Because I think that can be sometimes stuff that looks realistic or authentic can look a little boring, but he manages to make it not only look good, but look uh, believable as well. Man, that like piece, these, that these piece, signs. Ugh. Yeah, it's like, it's like the perfect blend of sculpted detail, manufactured detail. And the thing, the thing that really nails it on the head is that it's not noisy. 
Yes, because yes. A lot of the time, those things end up quite noisy, and then you just get overwhelmed by all the detail. Where this is, yeah, it's like you said, like man, it's, it's, it's just, just balance. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's it. It's yeah. I'm just looking at it now, <laughs> man. Yeah, I think we're both looking at it. It's just like, oof. Such a good piece. I think a lot of people just recognize that piece and you just show a thumbnail and it's like, yeah, that's yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. And it like instantly comes to mind. Like that should give you like an indication of the the kind of mastery that he has over his own art. Hmm. That's at least what I feel. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's Is it is it there feels, is there anyone else that, that jumps out or um, well, actually, another guy from Arcane. I think he's not at Arcane <laughs> anymore. I think he's at uh, uh, Allegorithmic. Uh, his name is Geoffrey Rosan. Mm -hmm. Geoff I don't know. Je Geoffrey Rosan. Oh, you're trying, um, to, trying to go into French now. Yeah, oui, oui. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's at, he's with Allegorithmic, Alleg Allegorithmic now. Mm -hmm. But uh, he, he used to be at Arcane too. It's just like amazing stuff on his art station. Uh, really nice uh, texture work as well. Uh, all right, I'll send you the link. Um, loop, loop. Um, yeah, just some of the materials are amazing. And um, oh, I don't think I have seen this. Yeah, probably. I mean, yeah. no, I, ha it's... I haven't seen this. Oh, oh, you haven't seen it? Oh. No, I haven't seen this. Oh, interesting. Um, no, but this it's the same thing, right? I mean, of course, it also has to do with the with the amazing art direction that they had on Dishonored, but it's the same thing. It's clean. It's crisp. It's it has a touch of realism while still having this like whimsical, you know, interesting silhouette, interesting uh, texturing. It's it's like a perfect blend for me, and and like it gives. So what I feel like it it has this artistic style. Like there's there's this freedom that that they had mm -hmm. while while working on this. You know that they they were able to um, like. Um, exaggerate some some stuff like uh some silhouettes or some some uh colors yeah but then you still have this realistic like roughness and realistic um uh realistic touch in the textures that still grounds it mm -hmm. you know yeah, that's it's, what's it's so such cool a to good me. combination of stylized aspects with realized uh with, with realistic aspects yeah it's uh, I I love this I love this uh, so these good. two portfolios because because that's also a thing that they do like in their buildings right like they always have this gradient going from from bottom to top like that's something that mm. you see across all those things but it is a stylized effect but it doesn't feel stylized yeah like it feels it feels, it, it feels it, grounded it, within the earth yeah. Yeah, exactly. It it if there's there's everything is purposeful. Yeah, I think that's the best way to describe it, or at least everything feels purposeful, which is more important, arguably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm just I'm just scrolling through these images, and it's it's so beautiful. Yeah. Like it's it's really, yeah. It's it's like you said, like it's a perfect balance of of all these elements. Yeah. Yeah, in the meantime, I've been thinking about uh, my favorite artist, and I gotta be honest, like, I don't have one that really jumps out, hmm. and I was thinking about why, and I think it's because I, I do the blog on a weekly basis, and I always have, like, an inspiration section in the blog, hmm. so I always get inspired by by so many different people out there that it's really hard for me to pick out one um so i'm gonna i'm gonna share like a couple of them and uh one is leah augustine she i think she's working for uh a respawn at the moment yeah yeah she's an environment artist for respawn and this is i'll send you the link mm -hmm. and her, her snow scene is just it's just so nice like uh, it's a it's a constant point of reference for me. Oh man, that is nice. God it's damn. like yeah, it's like the perfect combination of like all the different elements, like the subtle wind sway, like the 
the snow just falling like really gently like all the shaders are, are really nice like, yeah the materials look amazing yeah the the thing the thing that i gravitate towards is sometimes when i'm looking for inspiration to put on the block like i have like a, a massive list at the moment but i just go go over like art station i filter mm. by environments and then i just click on the first thing that that piques my mind like that that yeah. piques my interest and it always yeah, it always tends to be something someone different and it can be it can be a wide range. Like some sometimes students like make such kick ass work that it's just like, yeah, I'm so like this is an inspiration for me. Like and I and I pull yeah, I pull some things from like all all those uh different artworks that I can improve on myself. Mm. So yeah, it's it's really tricky for me to uh to point it to one artist but that being said like i don't i don't really focus on only uh 3d art too like i i come from concept art like i had i had my upcomings in in like traditional media and so yeah. i was i was used to looking at um traditional painters and all that stuff and i'm a big fan of uh, francisco goya where uh, my favorite piece of him is um what's it called like the devouring of saturn where he basically eats his own child because out of jealousy but it's just it's a it's a really dark piece so <laughs> oh, oh 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 yeah 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 of course you, uh, yeah, you know, I know it. like one. it's it's one of yeah. one of the most famous pieces oh man yeah and it's yeah it's such a good piece like especially yeah yeah saturn devouring his son like uh jesus it's my it's my favorite piece like there's there's something like the the backstory of it like there's something so it's it's gruesome but it's not yeah purely gruesome like he he's in pain too like there's mm. there's so so many emotions going through it and um i love i love going to to like museums to to watch to watch some uh, traditional art too like there's there's something yeah. about it, like the way that they use composition, the use of colors. Like there's, you're literally looking at masterpieces of how to guide your eye through like a composition. Yeah. So, yeah, I have like a, a ton of pictures from whenever we go on like a holiday, we tend to go to like art museums too. Like I mean, mm, we we recently yeah. went to Vienna, uh, so we we did a we did like a, an art exhibition there right man you you're just looking at it like it, it can be like a, a painting it can be like a, a sculpture like from marble and like how they did the hands oh, and... oh my god that man. is that is one of the craziest things to me yeah seeing that up close like there's this there's this material like i'm i don't know how it's called but it's like these these lace strips like you, you know what I'm talking about? Like it's it's like this really really thinly woven fabric with like a super unique patterns. Yeah. And then you see like an artist sculpting that out of marble. <sighs> and I'm just like, to hell! Like just this shouldn't be just, possible. Just like uh, you know, like when there's like flowing fabric in general. Yeah. Like it looks like it would be made with marvelous designer, you know, yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> that that stuff made with uh, made with uh, marble. I just. There's no, I just cannot understand mm -hmm. how, why. It's just a, what? it's just a different level. Like, yeah. that's, that's something that we're never going to reach. I think. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm, we're not, I'm not going to reach it. We're not, yeah, we're not sculpting a marble either. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm definitely not, I'm never doing that. <laughs> yeah. Man. But it's, it's so crazy. Like, um, yeah, that that's why I, I tend to look at so many different things, because you can get inspired by so many different things at the same time. Like it would be, at a certain point, it would be a shame to only be inspired by one artist or or whatever. Like yeah, uh, yeah, that is true. That's true. Th I th mean, that's it's... also not what the question was about, right? I'm not trying to uh, say yeah. that you were talking about it in that way, but it's uh, yeah, there's so many amazing things out there. Like getting. I just get inspired by by a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's the thing. I would say this is the what what I was talking about with with um, with uh, Yannick's portfolio mm -hmm. is 
that's probably the peak you know that's that's the peak of everything for me like that's yeah. the top of the top but that's exactly like like you said it's it's there's no point in looking for a reference uh, for uh, inspiration in one place. I mean, that's what we just said pretty mm-hmm. much earlier, right? So, yeah, it's uh, inspiration can be taking a walk in the park, like you know, <laughs> that can be so. <clears throat> yeah, it, it could be a big inspiration, just like mm-hmm. looking at the way the sun hits. I don't know. Yeah, the, you can the, get inspired the, by everything. The trees. Like, um, yeah. Oh, actually, now that I think a little bit more deeply about it, like I love listening to ash torp like uh he is an inspiration for me but not purely from like an artistic perspective but Mm. just by he's he's so involved like he's constantly doing so many things at the same time that that is that that is a big inspiration for me Mm. because uh he does like motion graphics and he worked on like the assassin creed movie and he's doing like his own uh personal what is it? A Star Wars fan art at the moment? Um, I'll see if I can send a link. But yeah, just listening to uh, the stuff that he does and like how he does things, like it's it's so inspiring. Like he, he seems to be so organized in the way that he does stuff. Like that is that is like a super big inspiration for me. I can I, I send you the art station link, but there's there's yeah he doesn't have a lot of stuff yeah there's there's tons more out there yeah I would I would say oh, that wow. that is nice. like a, a big inspiration for me like if I had to if I really had to put it down to one artist that might be it nice okay yeah that was a really really good question even though yeah it was uh yeah it was kind of tricky for me to answer but it's uh it's it's put me in a state where i but i'm self-reflecting <laughs> so it's good yeah yeah it's it's interesting to think about that kind of stuff just to to understand maybe what direction you want to go in mm-hmm. like think about what where you've been going and then if you want to continue on that path or maybe you do something else it's, it's it's really interesting it's, it's really important to have uh that kind of self-reflection mm-hmm yeah exactly totally agree man all right so that's gonna be it for for this session of the podcast so we'll catch you in the next one all righty guys thanks for listening thanks everyone we hope you enjoyed this episode of the podcast if you did then you can check out the playlist on the right for more episodes and don't forget to like subscribe or share it with friends If you're an environment artist trying to break into the industry or just looking to grow your skills, you can find a ton more resources like weekly tips, blog posts and more on beyondextend.com. But that's going to do it from our side, thanks so much for joining us and a shout out to all of our Patreon supporters who made this possible.